Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with the recap of my Christmas series for 2020. Um, I, this is something that I started last year, and someone had asked if, after all the videos were done, if there could just be a recap showing each of the cards um, on the, within a couple days after the series. So I started that last year. So first, let me say, I hope everyone enjoyed it. We kind of went a different route um, than what I did the previous year and, of course, the year before that, which was, which was actually the first year that I did this. So what, I'm look, what I, what I kind of did this year was focus on your stash. Really pull out the techniques and... To also say, you know, look, they can be applied to anything that you may have. I think that makes sense. A lot of things were my paper scraps. Um, really went into that as well. And as always, showed many different projects. We've got a lot of cards here. But when it came to the coloring, a lot of it was colored pencil. That's my medium of choice. Um, I did pull in some watercolors. I uh, did pull in some, you know, I don't think I pulled in any alcohol marker coloring. Oh my goodness. I'm paging through. I did. I see one. So I pulled in that for a little bit. <laughs> Just making sure. Um, didn't do an art journal, but created a card that looked like an art journal page. Maybe that art journal page is too big. Um, so those are the things that I'm going to discuss going through this. Now, this video is going to be long because I'm doing it where I'm just turning on my phone, which is what I use to record, and I'm going to explain each card. Some of them will be quicker than others, um, but I just want to go through the techniques that I used and the stamp set companies that were featured in those projects. The other thing that I wanted to look at as well is to make sure you had 25 different projects. Something that I did last year, like especially with the uh, journal book, I had that spread over three days. So it took up three days. I'm not gonna, I didn't do that this time. It only took up one. So kind of did a live slash voiceover with that. And that will be finished within the next week before the new year, where you will see some of the ephemera being made and then finally the reveal on that as well. So two more videos will come out on that. Um, <clears throat> so I, I kept everything in there. So for tags, I did all of my tags in one video. Um, so many different techniques, so many different stamp sets used. Um, same thing with the simplicity, the two different things. So I wanted to make sure that you had a project or something different with paper for each of the days. And I think it worked out well for you guys. <laughs> I was going a little crazy. <laughs> but that's the beauty of it. And that's something that always happens. And I do enjoy this every single year, even though this is the third annual of the Christmas series. So let's stop gabbing, which is what I do awesomely. And let's look at day one. So day one focused in on, and you're going to hear some paper off to the side here, because I still have them in a box held with some notes. So day one featured Stampers Anonymous. I usually start out with a Stampers Anonymous or a Tim Holtz um, style vintage card when it comes to my series. And this stamp set was called the Poinsettia. I used Distress inks and I also used my Altenew Vintage Gold Embossing Powder. Now this is a uh, kind of an art journal technique on a 5 by 7 card base. The card base is by Tonic Studios. And what I'll also try to do is have either the link to the video down below or I'll put it up there so that you can, if you're interested, if you haven't seen the series um, or you're just catching this now, you'll be able to click that link and go right to this card. All right, so I'll make, I'll, hopefully I won't forget. If I do, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, and I also used my ink smushing technique to create this one for the leaves and the flower. It's the same stamp set that we just kept on turning to get these differences. Again, it's the, 
the process that I do, um, that I learned and inspired by, Vicky, um, whose new last name I dare not to try to um, pronounce because I will chop it up, Vicky P. Um, I'm very much inspired by her art journals. So that's kind of the take that I took here. I have Christmas greetings for the sentiment, um, and it's a nice size card. All right, so that was day one. Day two, I pulled in a design team project. Let me stop making this noise here. Um, by Birch Press Designs. Um, we used a matte foil cardstock. And the layered die set that I'm using here is called Laura, uh, Cora. And I was able to use my scraps um, just because I was able to cut these sections off, cut off this panel um, when I did my cut. So just a matte gold with the traditional colors. Again, featured was Birch Press Designs. For day three, I pulled in a few types of stamp sets, and no one said that we have to make cards a standard A2 size or what your standard size is for a card. Here, mine is an A2, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, but why can't we just make four by four cards? Pull in those small stamp sets that we just love to create. Maybe it's an embossing folder that we're going to create. Maybe it's a mid-size single stamp from your favorite company. Again, these are the different cards that we can make and they are four by four. This is a penny black stamp set and I used my watercolor pencils for this with some embossing. This was a uh, Sizzix embossing folder and just added some gems just to accent that. This was a Tailored Expressions stamp set, and I used my colored pencils along with my embossed pen to add some embossing areas, um, but here I just used my coloring pencils to color in those letters. This is a Honey Bee stamp set, Merry and Bright. I used my colored pencils to color into the, each of the lights, and then I went over with my embossing pen and just used clear ink to give it a little bit of gloss. Maybe you don't have glossy accents. This stamp set is by Paper Rose. And once again, I used my watercolor pencils to create some shading, added a few gems, and the sentiment on top. So again, technique here is create a 4x4 card. Maybe you have stamp sets that are small that you like to collect. Or maybe you have a big stamp set that has a perfect single ish, um image that would look great on this size card. So again, that was day three. Again, remember, you're not limited to a standard card size. I pulled in another design team project for day four. This is for um, rubber stamp tapestry, and I use the Simon Says uh, piece. I believe that's a Simon Says, no. My favorite things, my favorite things piece. And I fussy cut those out onto masking paper and then I just stamped. The peg stamp that I'm using here is called Poinsettia in the Pines. And it is a beautiful stamp set. Added some uh, Midas Tonic Studios Gold Shimmer um, to the words or to the letters. And our card is complete. For day five, we created something just a little bit different. We created our garland. Now, last year I did this and I used one of Tim Holtz's cookies, um, which I thought was absolutely adorable. So it's great for ornaments and or um, a garland. So here I made a garland as well. And these are made representative to look like postage stamps. The stamp set itself is by Newton's Nook, and it's called Holiday Stockings, and there is a die that does match this. The white part um, of this was cut out using Hero Arts Infinity Nested Postage Stamp Die. I added a jewel and the colors or the uh, coloring medium that I used to color these were my colored pencils. Um, again, just got some great dimension, added some different tones into that, 
and again just a small garland because you can have multiple of these just another way you can use your stamp set um, for something other than a card for day six i'm pulling in brutus monroe and yes this is a brutus monroe stamp set it is called gnome place like home and here I use my lawn fawn dies, hillside dies, so that he could just be peeking outside of all of these snowy hills. For my coloring, I actually used my polychromos um, for this. I do believe they, while they're colored pencils, they're a different colored pencils. <clears throat> the ones I usually use are wax base. These are oil base. Um, and then I added some glitter in his the brim of his hat and then we embossed all of those beautiful snowflakes and again this is a slimline card now this slimline card has been cut to be three and a half by eight and a half um, and when you have something this tall it's tough to make it a top folding nine down ten it will always be a side folding if it's a portrait and a top folding when it becomes a landscape for day seven, we focused in on an interactive card. And to me, Lawn Fawn does a beautiful job when it comes to their interactive cards. Both, yeah, both in the way of their creation, um, how they do uh, design the dies along with the stamp sets, but their videos are phenomenal as well. Hold on, I'm going to get a sip of tea here. Hold on. Their videos are extremely informative. And this here, the stamp set that I used is called Snow Much Fun. And I also use the Waving Pull Tab Starter Set along with their Winter Plaid 6x6 Paper Pad. And when I pull on this little tiny tab here, we are making a snowman. And how freaking cute is that? I'm just saying how freaking cute is that? It's so cute freaking yes 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 you gotta love it i love it i think i could do this this is just as good as a shaker card yes it's too cute okay i'll stop so so i did try it putting it on a hill i know when i was seeing these videos um and the wonderful inspiration i was getting they were doing it on a flat edge i just wanted to see what the curved edge would do so we have that and then again, that's a standard A2 size card. I did use my colored pencils again to color in that image into play. Now, let me see here. What day was that? All right. So day eight. All right. Now, day eight is a six by six card. The stamp set was by LDRS and it was simply called Poinsettia Background. I actually used for the first time for this video my Karen Pro brush markers and I am in love with them. Um, I did use Bristol cardstock. I do believe and I feel, again my opinion, when it comes to like my Zig Real brush pens or any type of watercolor art marker, um, whether you have the Artezas, whether you have the Zigs, whether you have you know, whatever, oh, hoo hoos, you know, all these different brands, and then the Karen Pro. I feel that they work best on Bristol Smooth or Vellum because I have the Vellum, and to me, it works the same. Um, cardstock. Now, these are very different, the Karen Pro. They are ink, um, they are not stored on their side. So there's a lot of differences. I have yet to try it on my Canson XL or other watercolor paper I have, and I do plan to do that. I did not put a sentiment on the front of this. I don't feel that there's any need. We do a lot of work to the front of these cards. Um, so there are many times where I feel, you know what, the sentiment's either going to go on the inside or it gets no sentiment at all. Look, it's a holiday card. Just saying. Um, again, why would we want to cover that up? And again, that's a 6x6 six six card, and I used the Tonic Studio card base for that. For day 9, we created... A video for the simplicity series now for this uh, I used one six by six paper pad and that is it and I added two solid colors a red and a silver mat from my stash these are the cards that we created 
And here, I'll pull these up so you can see them and then put them down. Um, and again, in this video, I showed how I broke down the paper pad, how I came about um, to have this number of cards using the sentiments that are inside this paper pad. And again, you can get some great cards and these would make perfect gifts as well. You know, maybe you have that someone and you want to make them anywhere from 10 to 15 cards along with tags to match for their gift giving. I think this would be a great set. You can get the six by six paper pads at a very reasonable price. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 cards. And here I think we just have many, many, many tags, all kinds of different shapes and sizes. They all have an embellishment of some sort, whether it's stripes, whether it's one of the sentiments from the cutouts. Um, they are all different size of tags. Some of them don't even have um, an embellishment on it because it's the foiled paper. Um, but you can see so, so many. Sometimes the paper just works on its own and we've got plenty of room to write on the other side. And again, you can see we're just getting smaller and smaller with our tags, but these are perfect. So a very nice gift set um, for anybody that you need that last special gift for. All right, let me clean these up. And again, that was day nine. So again, all we need, and I've said this before, we only need paper, scissors, and adhesive and our imagination have fun with it for day 10 we made some place cards let's cut that cardstock down into some different sizes and let's make some beautiful place cards for our table setting all right so this one here is a sizzix stamp set and it is called christmas envelope um, again a lot of these stamp sets i found in my stash also some of them can be newer stamp sets if they were available, they were linked down in the video description. So you'll need to go back to that video. And again, I'll try to have them linked all over the place. I did use my alcohol markers just to color this out, matted it onto some colored cardstock, and then added some stickles to the corners just for a little bit of glimmer. For this one here, this is Stampin' Die Set by Hero Arts, and it's called Santa Door Accessories. So here I just added some of the extra pieces, and we're free to write the person's name who's going to be joining us for the holidays right here in that wood frame that's hanging. So again, these are a little bit taller, um, but plenty of room to put their names um, in these sections. Again. They always don't have to be cards. Let's make some place cards and use our items as home decor. It'll stretch out what we have. For day 11, let's make a rainbow. Why not? Why can we not have a rainbow for our holidays? All right, and it can be any holidays. So here I fell in love. This I just found this year. This is by... Alexandra Renke and it's a Merry Christmas die of course I just used my scraps and created a rainbow in Christmas this is a four by nine slimline card and because I did this in black I did frame it with black cardstock this one here I think is absolutely adorable this is a rainbow of trees in the background these dies here are by Simon Says and they're simply called Christmas trees this sentiment I am in love because we can use our emboss it pen to put our emboss ink up top and then use our white embossing powder to put snow on top of it this is by poppy stamps and it's called snowy Merry Christmas um, I think that's absolutely adorable. And then I also pulled in my Lawn Fawn Hillside Dies. And yes, the Wonky Stitch Rectangle by My Favorite Things is making a comeback. Absolutely. 
For this one here, I used the Simon Says Simple Ho, and I used the Simon Says Merry Frame. Now here, I just cut each of the letters with a different color in the rainbow. I cut this out. Now, what I would change is I actually, I used the Simon Says Glitter Paper here for the background of the Ho 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 Ho, and also of the Framed Mary. Now for the Framed Mary, I did add um, some glossy accents. That kind of made that go a little, kind of deadened it down. Um, so I would suggest don't do that. Um, you can see how it looks gray. I mean, it looks great that it's filled in. If you use solid cardstock, perfect. But the glitter, let the glitter come through. I think the glossy accents kind of dyes it just a little bit um, when it comes to that. There's that wonky stitched rectangle dye. But why not? Let's add a rainbow to our holidays. It'll make us smile. I promise. So that's what we did for day 11. I have to say... Um, there are two cards within this series that are tied for first place, in my opinion. I, you know, I look through all these cards, and, and we all do. We make our cards, and we're like, yes, that one's my favorite. I, I just love that. Or we make a card, and we think it's going to go completely downhill, but it still turns out to be our first ones. It is awesome that when we look at the art that we create, and I am talking about you as well, if you're making a card, you're creating art, and it's your art. It's your take on that stamp set. It's your take if you're casing one of my cards. You will always have your take on it. No two cards will ever look alike, and I know some of you have heard me say this before, but I can't stress it enough. Enjoy this craft, and there's going to be that time where when you look at your card and you believe it's going downhill, keep going with it, but when you look at it, you're going to look at it and say, hmm, that's pretty gosh darn good. You'll use other words, maybe to make a point, but I don't want to do that here, just saying, but you will. And that is when it's truly going to become fun because you should start saying that now. Day 12 was a struggle for me. I fell in love with this stamp set. Absolutely fell in love with it. It is by, yes, the Colorado Craft Company from their Big and Bold. Uh, there's a reason why I'm stressing this between Brutus Monroe and Craft Colorado Company if you didn't watch the whole series because I'm an idiot. Just saying. Um, this stamp set just has the hat. That's all it shows. And you can change this part here. You can either show a flower, a holly and berries, or a poinsettia. But I had to have this flower. And I loved that the fact that the stamp set is just the hat. What drew me in to create this, now this is a seven by seven card base. Again, I get them from Tonic Studios when it comes to my odd shaped card bases um, instead of making them. You can, um, but I find it's easier to get the card bases pre-made. Um, is the sentiment. I fell in love with the sentiment that says, Happy Birthday, Frosty the Snowman. Um, and again, he says that in the movie. So I think it's kind of cool. So what I did was, the video is absolutely hysterical because there are areas where I forgot to turn the video on. There's areas where I couldn't figure out how to do this mask and I finally figured it out. Um, I drew in this adorable face. I started watercoloring this area. I wasn't liking what the watercolors were doing. I'm not yet comfortable with them. So I came up, okay, let's put the base with the watercolors and then we'll come in with colored pencils to add the accents for the nose and the hat and the band. The face with the mouth included and the cheeks and the eyes was all painted with the watercolors. I even added colored pencil to the accents of the flower as well. Now you can see, I love the look of a blizzard with all of the splatters. Forgot to have the flower on, so the flower doesn't have any splatters, but I'll be able to add splatters to that, which I will be doing soon. Um, but it's okay if you don't, just saying. 
Um, and I didn't show how I used the colored pencils to do the shading, except for the little bit of the hat, because I didn't realize that I had stopped recording at some point, and I just kept on going. And you all never got to see the background of this. This is actually done with alcohol markers, my Prismacolor alcohol markers. Um, and yes, this is Canson XL watercolor paper. But I am absolutely in love with this card. I think it looks great. I think it is absolutely adorable. And this will be tough for me to give to somebody to wish them a happy birthday. So I have the feeling it's going to hang up in my wall at work so I can look at it. But this was um, one of my favorites. It's one of those where, as I said, going downhill and when it was done, I'm like, yeah, that kind of, that kind of finally just clued in. And again, I kept on going with it. I didn't give up. Okay, day 13. I had a lot of fun with day 13. So the concept of ornaments. Um, got to pull in a lot of items um, that I hadn't pulled in in a while. Again, did a lot of digging in my stash. So this base here, um, this large ornament is by Paper Roses. It's a company that I've actually... Um, located this year recently and I'm not sure how long they've been around they've probably been around for years um, and I'm really becoming a fan of their designs um, their images and of their dyes so this is the large ornament I double layered this to give it some strength I stamped on the back I stuck something here on top of it let me see if I can get that there we go um, I did some embossing on the back, Merry Merry Christmas. So you can make this a tag. These are actually going to be ornaments. Um, this one here, I used my colored pencils. This is a honeybee stamp. And it is the flower that I cannot mention, which is a winter anemone. Yeah, that's how we're just gonna go with that. It's the only time that I will say it. So again, these are just colored pencils that I used, added some gems and some twine and some threads. For this one, I used some layering dies um, to really fill up that center. Now, for this one, this is by Sunny Studios um, Layering Die Set, and it's called the Layer Poinsettia Die. So I added three of those, some gems, again, some twine just coming out. Again, double layered, wishing Merry Merry Christmas. Tag or ornament is your option here. Um, and I just love... It's like when I do my tags, I got to have these billowing things coming off of them um, or hanging from them. Um, so it's, you know, somebody said in, in a comment that it's becoming a trade of mine. So I'll go with that. Yes, this is my trade to have all of these things hanging over. These two here are the Altenu layering dies for the flowers. This one here, of course, is the roses. And then this one here... Um, is actually called the flower that I cannot mention again. And I'll probably, you know, just have it sitting here um, <laughs> in a caption down there. Um, but you can see the big, bold um, beautifulness of those layered dies, again, stamped on the back with our um, tassels coming down, just adding, again, tags or ornaments. Um, loving these, loving these. I do subscribe to the craft of flower and by doing this this is giving me some awesome awesome um thought processes on things to to actually make here um this here i'm using the hero arts snowflake um medallion fancy die again don't have to be so fancy we can just put a more simplistic die right on the front and again we can use this as a tag um, or an ornament. Here I actually used my uh, my Prismacolor alcohol markers and just created a blend. So it looks like this blue is coming up there and it gets lighter. And then this one here is actually by Paper uh, Roses. Um, this is called their Snowflake Circle Die. And I added some gems to accent that snowflake. Used my embossed pen to add a little bit of metallic on the top. And again, stamped the back of it as well. So again, some really large ornaments. 
um, but they are absolutely gorgeous. Now you can also stamp on these if you wanted to and color in your images like I did here. Again, I chose flowers. You can use holiday scenes as well. So again, that was day 13 of the Christmas series. Day 14, I pulled out a die set by Recollections, which I can get at my local Michael's store. It came with three dies, somewhat of a nested. So again, encouraged you, dig into your nested die sets, whether they're circles, squares, um, ovals, or anything like that. They can be simple shapes. These just happen to be trees, and we've used, dug into our stash when it came to these scraps also for the specialty papers and added a few gems and set them differently. So set all the dies towards the bottom, set these in the center and set these towards the top. Different papers, different settings will give you different looks. All right, so that was day 14. Day 15, we must always you know, bring in some adult humor We've got to have some fun with it. So this one was kind of going all over the place. So very different size card. This actually measures three and a half by five and a half. And I used the My Favorite Things Martini Time. I used some stickles and some liquid pearls to color in the letters. I didn't mask. I mean, I masked on this, which is great. But this one is sitting on something. This is kind of floating in the air, which doesn't make sense. This is kind of sitting on the bottom. I should have put that up just a little bit to show it's on the table. But again, we are not Hallmark. This is a handmade card. And only you are going to see those things unless you pull them out like I just did. What is really awesome is the sentiment. The fact you're holding this card in your hands is a Christmas miracle. Um, that is from the My Favorite Things Sassy Pants Holiday 2. T-O-O. -O. Um... So I love the sassy or sarcastic sentiments for the holidays. Kind of fits my personality. Not everybody's choice, but I think they are absolutely adorable. This will fill, fit in nicely into a standard A2 signs um, card. So a little bit of adult humor. For day 16, I featured art impressions. I love their stamps. Um, they also have some great interactive cards, um, great uh, watercolored scenes that you can utilize and to watch those videos are absolutely wonderful. So for this one, this set was called Santa Paws Set and I fell in love with it because there's a corgi on it. You gotta love the corgis. Yes, we love the corgis. Um, but I didn't use the corgi because um, he's with a group of puppies. I actually used the, I'm going to say he's a lab. And I meet, used my Polaroid die by Impressions Obsession or something like that. I think it's impressive. Impressions Obsessive. or uh, Yeah, right out of my head right there. Um, it is still available. It also comes with these edges to make it look like that's sitting in there. Created my own sentiment piece with a little tiny paw, and it simply says, Merry Christmas from the dog. It's faint to the point, and I used my color pencils to color the image. So again, we have fur babies. Why can't they give a card as well? Day 17, I think, is part of the three-way tie that I have for my first favorite card and that is this one. Now I cannot stress enough apologies to the craft, the Colorado Craft Company because for some reason when I posted this card, when I blogged about this card, when I posted the video for this card, when I did anything with this card, for some reason, I kept on calling it a Brutus Monroe stamp set, and it is not. It is a stamp set by the Craft Colorado or Colorado Craft Company. Oh my God! Um, it is specifically a slimline stamp set, which is really cool, and it's a beautiful poinsettias. Um, again, poinsettias are kind of tricky to color. Um, you know, your rest of the flowers, if you have a curve, you can put your highlight in the center, put your dark on one end of the petal, put your dark at the other end of the petal to give that curve look going away. 
Your poinsettias, not only do they curve long ways, but they curve each way and from the center of that petal. So if you see here, you've got that line and then it curves away and this way. So it's, you've got these different points of shading. So still practicing with how to color those. But this was done by colored pencils and it was done by my Prismacolor um, colored pencils. So yeah, this is one of my favorites where when I was done with it, I'm like, yeah, definitely a keeper. Okay, so for day 18, went with another uh, interactive theme. So we made a shaker card and made it into a slim line. This is a four by nine, so it's pretty big. Again, you can use a standard size 10 envelopes for your slim line cards that are four by nine. Matter of fact, I use that for any of my slim lines that I make, whether they're three and a half by eight and a half or the four by nines. So here we have our slim line. We have a silver blue and gray type theme. I use my Simon Says uh, Merry die and Christmas die. And then these here, these cutouts are by Lawn Fawn with their stitched ornament um, die set that's been out for a while. So always love a shaker because we have to do that forever. So that was day 18. For day 19, this one is just adorable. This is clearly Basotted uh, stamp set. Uh, this is Ba Humbug. Yep. Um, okay, can we look at those faces? Just look at those sheep. Okay, first of all, the sheep with the no Christmas trees, I just think it's cute. The sentiment, it's beginning to cost a lot like Christmas, I think is absolutely pressure or precious. These are, this was just a fun stamp set. The images are absolutely adorable. I love him sitting there with the antlers on with Paul's crossed. So just a cute pun on the, the holiday season, Christmas. Um, and I just thought this was absolutely adorable. <clears throat> For day 20, I know, let me take a sip of my iced tea here. I'm talking a lot. Okay, for day 20, we dug into my paper scraps of all of my specialty papers. I hoard my specialty papers. So I just cut strips, 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 and more strips. Um, and I did them in shades of blue and silver. And I did another one in the traditional greens, reds, golds. All right, and we just combined all of these. Then I grabbed a die for these and cut my images out. I was inspired by Christina Werner when she did this um, in, I believe it was just in her series. Again, I, you know, I'm watching these late at night. Don't make a note because I'm rude like that. But I know Christina Werner did this um, and I thought it was a great idea. For this here, I just used a piece of copy paper and I had the sentiment set and just created like a backdrop and went directly on to the four by nine slim size side uh, slim line size that I've created here. So again, it's just focusing and bordering out that sentiment. You could do the entire panel um, if you wanted to. Don't have anything cut out or uneven like this, and then just put your strip with your sentiment going across. Totally your choice. But dig into your scraps, whether they're textured, specialty papers, or your solid colors. Um, by all means, have fun with it. For day 21, and I've got to grab it here, we did, we started the journal. Um, I do throw a journal in. Now, what's funny with the journal, I'm already starting to laugh. I had a real problem filming this journal from the get. So, not only am I creating one journal, but I am actually creating six. So yeah, we've got one with true coffee dyed papers. We've got one with um, coffee and a water mixture coffee dyed papers. We've got a couple with no dye papers. Um, we've got some with a 
only a spray bottle with water, dyed papers, and baked. Um, and then we, it's just, I've got so many different sets here. Uh, okay, so these two here um, are not coffee dyed at all. We just put our papers inside. We cut them uh, specialty. You've got the whiteness of the papers. It is two digital downloads. There were so many to choose from. Um, so these, this is the one that I'm putting into the series. It's called Joyful Christmas and or the other one is called Candy Christmas. So those are not dyed in any way, whether water, coffee, coffee, water mixture. This here is the full-on coffee dyed mixture for Joyful Christmas. This one here has no coffee, but I do have it sprayed with water um, just to give it its crinky Ness. And because of the pans that I use, I don't clean them. There's a little bit of coffee residue that comes into play. So, and very chunky, very chunky. This one here is the Joyful Christmas as well. And again, same thing. This is actually a coffee, a little bit of coffee in a spray bottle, about a quarter and then three quarters of water. And I just sprayed the sheets and mixed those. So this is a very light hint of coffee dyed and then here's our candy Christmas same thing with a coffee and water mixture so it's not as heavy as what my usual coffee dye is so you can see the difference um, when it comes to that I do like the darker of the coffee um, when it comes to the dyeing but again there's just so many different ways that we can do that so <laughs> Actually, because of the problems I was having filming, I actually created six. We will be showing all of these and letting you all know when they go in my shop. <laughs> it's a beautiful collection. Again, check it out. So, moving on to, let's see here, day 22. Yes, day 22. So that is a new, hold on here, I'm making some noise. Um, this is Paper Tray Ink. So again, it's another slim line. It's four by nine. Um, and I really, I'll be, you know, I live under a rock, um, I believe. Um, I really did not hear of them before, uh, Paper Tray Ink, but I saw this beautiful small stamp set um, and it's a layering stamp set. Um, you know, layer principles. It's called Tree Essentials. Um, and I really had a lot of fun with it. Added some jewels to accent. Um, but yeah, I came across them this year. Again, I live in a rock. I'm sorry. Um, but I, you know, I like trying new things um, when it comes to that. So I think it's really pretty. Just did some layering with some sponge daubers to get that color down. So, for day 23, and no, I do not have them all with me. I held these back. The tags have been given to my sister. But in a video <clears throat> for day 23, I made 56 tags. With all kinds of different techniques, all kinds of different stamps. It was a lot of fun. We had die cutting going on. We had coloring going on. Um, we had watercolor pencils, we had zig markers, we had stamping, we had some colored pencils, uh, we had some embossing, we, <laughs> you name it, we had it going on. Um, <clears throat> we even added in bottle tags. And for those, I made them, I gave them a vintage feel using the My Favorite Things retro label, um, label stamp set using some digital downloads into it by Artie Mays um, and some others companies that are um, Pink Monarch was another company that I used um, and again all the companies that I did use are linked down in the video description for this so had a lot of fun with that video it was a long video um, but made all kinds of tags here this was the my next or your next stamp just stamped it with white pigment ink and then used a white colored pencil just to give it some accents 
And there you go, you have a simple tag. This is by Penny Black and it's a die set. I thought it was cute. Did not hit record on this, so it's funny. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> again, just used my die cutter to cut my pieces out. I used a lime green, the red, and the black and the white to give that one accents. This here, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the stamp set by Newton's Nook. Um, and again, it is length. I just don't have it near me right now. I actually used my watercolor pencils for these to color these in and added the little tiny snowflake as a charm. These are double layered um, for the tags. This here is Darcy's Christmas Wishes. Um, and I used my Zig Real Brush pens to color these. And again, these are double layered as well. The die is actually by Pink and Main. It's their scalloped. These two are Hero Arts Fancy Dies. So there's that snowflake one again. And this is the Poinsettia Oval. Um, again, just made layers with these tags. Again, made them a double layer. Um, used different colors and then embossed using a Recollections uh, stamp set. And there's that fancy tag that I um, put together there because I love my tassels. Gotta have that. These here, we are just stamping. Now these two were shown together. So here, uh, Nicole Spore did some tags recently uh, with the gnomes and she just used red, white, and black on craft cardstock, very much inspired by that. So I used a recollection stamp set um, and there, is, there were dies that came with this and just started stamping away with the small ones. And for the larger ones, I even pulled in some embossing for the design that comes on the outside um, and the sentiment that goes onto the inside. This here is by Avery L. This was called the No Peaking, um, of course, um, die. And again, these are double layered with the two in the front inside, and you can have fun using your scraps for that background. These tags are by Simon Says. This is the Holiday Snowflake. This is the wreath, which came in their kit, but is available. Um, it was in their tag kit, I believe, last year. It is available, and I believe it's on sale. Oh, you want to jump in on that? Yes, it's a good sale. Good sale if it's not already sold out, so it might be. <laughs> and then we have the Hollies and Berries. Yes. So I used my ink smushing technique on these. It is my favorite technique. Um, I absolutely love it. And I think that you get a great difference between using craft and white cardstock. Added a few gems for the accents. They are double layered. These would also make beautiful ornaments for anyone's trees as well. And again, tags can be ornaments too. I do have a tree. It's not going up this year. I've made mention of it a couple times that I do have a tree with by paper products um, that I started a couple years ago, actually. So there's a lot of new um, things in there and people have said, oh, I'd love to see it. Well, I can't. We just had an issue here. So there's not many Christmas decorations up this year. Don't ask. <laughs> um, but next year, um, next year, I will definitely be doing that. Um, when it comes to that. So again, day 23 was nothing but tags and had a ball. Stretch out those supplies. Stretch out those dies. You will be surprised at what you'll come up with. This is third. I do. I have three of them that are the top three. Now, I, I think I'm in love with this one and that's because of the colors. The red, the gold, the black, and the ivory are just just striking um i don't know if it's the eeriness of it i don't know <laughs> what that is but this here was created using the alta new 3d embossing folder poinsettia this here is by scrapbook.com big and bold sentiments believe in the magic of christmas this is a piece of cardstock from a kit i believe i've received from pink and main and i still had that piece left fell in love with it cut out this poinsettia from the block after it was embossed and then even took my craft knife to add some dimension onto those leaves and voila you have an absolutely elegant and beautiful six by six 
um, card. And again, my card base is by Tonic Studios. Um, there's just something about this. I can't explain it. I added some jewels in the center. Um, I am just in love with this. Um, it, and it's the colors. It's that red. That red is just beautiful. I believe it's called Opera Scarlet. Um, or Opera Red Opera. Or Opera Red. Yeah, something like that. It is a satin specialty paper by Tonic. So that was day 24. Day 25 create our own backgrounds so for this i used the my favorite things diagonal stripe stamp set um, and i also used the gina k um, diagonal or striped um, stencil set so you can combine them so for this i combined some greens i can use the red and then used the stamp set again on the other way to create some lines and i used the all to new happy holidays um, sentiment it's a nice size you can see just how much it does fill up the front of our card for this one here I just used white pigment ink and then I crossed over again with the um, stamp set so again I have this check this lattice look going on simply from a uh, background diagonal stamp set Again, use the all to new sentiment, and then I've bordered each of these using um, some foil paper. This one also has some solid cardstock um, and so forth. So that was day 25. That was the series. I hope what my goal is is to teach you new techniques, to have you reach into your stash. Dig into what you already have. Use it another way. Um, use it in a different way so that you can stretch those products out so that you're not just using a stamp set once and then never seeing it again. Constantly dig back into your stash. If you are a hoarder of the pattern paper or your paper scraps, use them. Get them sliced up, get them cut up, and then put them back together. Um, you can create beautiful backgrounds that way um, when it comes to those scraps. So again, I do hope I was able to teach some new tricks, um, show you maybe a different way to do something. Maybe you were struggling with one way to do it, and maybe I showed you a different way. That will help you. Um, but again, most importantly, I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you enjoyed time with your friends and family. And if you couldn't be together with them, I'm sure there are ways to be found to spend some time together. All of the videos will be linked. I will not have any products listed in this video description. But if you have any questions, please make sure you leave those down below and I'll make sure I get to you as soon as I can. Again, all the videos will be linked as each one is shown in this video. So just make sure you look for the cards um, going on down there. Um, and maybe I'll put the playlist, I'll link the playlist down in the video description. Continue to smile, continue to laugh, and continue to stay safe and healthy. But remember what's most important for me, always, be creative and get ready for 2021. Take care, everyone.